Welcome back to another UFC fight prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the prelim fights for UFC Fight Night, Hermanson versus Vittori. So without further ado, let's get to our first prelim fight and our first fight on the card. So in our first fight on the card, we have in the Bantamweight division, Luis Smoka versus Jose Alberto Quinones. So look at this one right here. Um, at first I want to say Quinones might have a boxing advantage, but really looking to this one, I think Smoka is better just about every area. Quinones will be the bigger man and will pack more power. But outside of that, technique is all on Smoke's side as far as striking, definitely as far as grappling. And I think Smoke will be able to find his ranges on the feet, land his jab consistently, set up his levels, and then level chain and get drag Quinones to the ground. And, and, start, and start to really dominate and take a, you know take away any opportunity Quinones has in having a competitive fight or being in this fight as far as if it was just a pure striking matchup and take it to the ground where Smoker has a clear advantage and then dominate in that area. I think he peppers up in the first round on the ground and on the feet. Then the second round, rinse and repeat, take him down, like set him up, level change, drag him to the ground in the second round, pepper him up, give him like start to load on him on the ground, force him to make a mistake and then tap him out in that second round. So in this fight, I have Lewis Smoka via second round submission. Now to our next fight, we have in the lightweight division, Gabriel Benitez versus Justin James. So looking at Benitez, I actually Googled him and like found some stuff that I didn't even know about him as far as his stats. He actually is like one of the better, has one of the best strike differentials in UFC history and then for his weight class. So that shows that his defense is pretty solid. And you're going to get Justin James, who's not the most technical striker, who kind of relies on jumping and drawing all his power into like a hook. That's really all he got as far as on the feet for the most part. He's aggressive and he'll run his fist into your face as hard as he can and or jump and try to lunge his fist into your face as hard as you can and hope he knocks you out. And he's been pretty effective with it. But outside of that, and also what's most dangerous about him in this one, it would be his wrestling if he would choose to use that or can find success with that. But as far as in the UFC, he has had scores zero takedowns and has barely shot a takedown. I think he might shot a one or two takedowns and was unsuccessful. In his debut, he got a knockout on like under a minute, so... Has used his wrestling, but that will be his most dangerous tool as far as in this fight. His wrestling and grappling. But I don't know if he'll utilize that or will he, has he fallen in love with his knockout power or yeah, his knockouts and knockout ability. But if he sticks to his striking, he's going to get picked apart. And I think even with the wrestling, Benitez has been making improvements to his wrestling and his defense. So I feel like James can have success with that, but more so than not, Benitez will be able to counter well, get back to his feet, and make James waste energy on, a, on that and be even more sluggish and labored and predictable on the feet. And Benitez will be able to catch and counter and just start to, like I said, chew his legs up, chew his body up, and really pick his, his strikes high and low levels to his striking, not just head hunting or leg hunting or body hunting or point fighting, but really seeing and firing and picking apart his target. I don't think he, he stops James. Like, I don't see a stoppage in his one, but I start to see in the later rounds he start to dominate, especially when James start to get his, his takedown stuff and start to get pushed back. And then, like, not, you know, start to fatigue and start to get picked apart down the stretch of this fight. Made the first round be explosive. Second round, he still have a little bit there. But by the third round, he just really be getting walked down and picked apart in that third round and beat to a decision. So, in this one, I have Gabriel Benitez via decision. Now, to our next fight, we have in the featherweight division, Ilya Taporia versus Damon Jackson. So, look at the one right here. You got two solid grapplers. But I would say Taporia is the better fighter overall. I might say Jackson's a better grappler, but I'll be saying Taporia is the better grappler, but I would say Damon, well, I think overall Taporia is the better grappler. But as far as danger, as far as with submissions and get, tapping people out with submissions, Jackson is, but overall his grappling, maybe Taporia like he's more versed and more well-rounded and more fluid with more areas and stuff as far as his, his grappling. And he changes together better and flows together better. Whereas Jackson's kind of better at, you know, finding opportunities for like like opportunistic submissions and stuff. In areas like like the, the end of fight, where like I said, Tapori's control is just better. His wrestling is definitely better overall. Whether it be freestyle, folk style, or Greco, that's definitely all better than Jackson by far. Jackson's not a, gra a wrestler at all. His wrestling is horrendous for the most part, but it's just who's solid. Striking not the best, and Tapori on the feet definitely the better striker, technically, power wise, and every asset. Jackson will be taller by a lot at five, like I think five ten versus like a five seven Tapori. Like I said, he's not their best striker, so that reach won't really mean much. 
He's really all he's just using that reach is for his arms and legs to try to wrap them around you and tap you out. But I think Tapuri is savvy, I mean, like savvy enough and grappling and strong enough and powerful enough to really neutralize a lot of Jackson's grappling, take him down and do what he wants. I feel like the smart fight for Tapuri will be just keep him on the feet and put him away, like use his grappling in, in defensively and just sprawl and brawl and pick apart Jackson. Tapuri definitely has a tight defense as far as on the feet. And he rips some shots, got a lot of power. And like I said, Jackson's not the best striker, not the best defensive striker, all offensive. So keep it tight. Stop the takedowns, rip him to the body, rip him up top. It will be a quick first or second round TKO without much issue. But, you know, fighters, like, they got their own ego. So they, I feel like the poor is going to be trying to you know, just fight his fight. He's not going to go out there trying to just, like, really go out there and look to um, have a game plan necessarily where, like, oh, this will be the easy route. He's going to go out there to be himself and mix in takedowns, be aggressive. Slamming um to, um Jackson down, just trying to dominate him in every single aspect of this fight, and I think that's going to lead to a decision. Like I said, Jackson is, is no slouch in the grappling and definitely very dangerous. So Tapuri is going to be in a battle nonstop because I feel like a young fighter, this only two fights in the UFC, he's going to try to like I said, fight this fight, fight his fight. He's not going to come in there necessarily looking for a game plan or trying to do the easy route. He's going to go out there and fight the fight. He always fight mix tight, ripping to your body, ripping up top. And then it's like making you embrace his grind and pick you up, and slam you down, and transition and try to just destroy you, wreck you on the ground, wreck you in every single aspect. Like I said, that's going to invite a grappling matchup, which is going to allow I think Jackson to be in this fight and will allow Jackson to make it to the decision in like a more competitive fight than if he just fought with a game plan on Taporia's side. But nonetheless, I see Taporia being able to dominate in most areas in this fight outside of Jackson giving up some fight off his back, but. Taporia dictating where this fight is at all points. So in this fight, I got Ilya Taporia via decision. Now to our next fight, we have in the flyweight division, Jimmy Flick versus Cody Durden. So you got a solid wrestler in Durden and you got a solid grappler in Flick. I think Jimmy Flick is the more well-rounded fighter. I think Cody Durden is more so just a wrestler. Not the most impressive striking, but definitely no slouch in the striking area. But he definitely more so falls under like he got a wrestler striking. And without the pop of a typical wrestler where you're like they're real explosive and got these real big overhands and these real big blast double legs and stuff and they're just so physically imposing he more so kind of falls into that that um, working man wrestler like not the best not no super amazing strength or amazing explosion but he'll be in your face he'll make you work and he'll take you down at the takedown takedown he'll work you the whole course of the fight that's what he's gonna do he'll make you embrace the grind but he's not that fighter that's gonna explode and knock you out with an overhand or pick you up and slam you make you look like a baby He's not that guy. And going to Jimmy Flick, I see Jimmy Flick is he's the taller fighter, the longer fighter, the more averse fighter, and the more dangerous fighter. I think on the feet, he's a more dangerous striker. Definitely much more fluid on the feet. Definitely pick a shot better. Definitely a higher fight IQ. And also has more experience in other forms of striking than Cody Durden. More experience. Not, Cody Durden does have some experience in other forms of striking outside of just UFC, but Flick has more experience in that. But to get to the conclusion of this prediction right here, I think Flick is a better striker. He's a longer fighter. And I feel like Cody Durden's style just brings him into Flick's game. And Flick is not like a guy that's going to lay on his back or lay in position. He's going to make you work at all points. And I feel like that's going to not work out the best for Durden. I think the strike is going to force Cody Durden to, you know, to overextend some shots, panic wrestle, and like I said, shoot some sloppy shots. And the way he shoots some of his takedowns, he extends that neck out there. And Flick will latch on to that. And if he don't get it the first or second time, he'll get it the third or the fourth. And I just feel like the fight goes on, that neck going to be more exposed. And when Flick starts to really pressure Durden and Durden starts to be on his back, but once he starts to weather down and start, like I said, starts to shoot and overstand on these shots, that neck going to be open for darts, be open for guillotines. And eventually, like I said, when he starts getting pushed back and start getting peppered up, overstands on the shot and gets tapped out in that second round. So in this fight, I got Jimmy Flick via second round submission. Now to our cold prelim headliner we have in the lightweight division, Matt Wyman versus Jordan Levitt or Levitt. So look at right here. Matt Wyman is surprisingly one inch taller, but definitely the stats be lying. He probably like five seven five eight, but he be boosting stats. Got them baby arms, and that's pretty. I think they were like six nine inch reach, but really probably like a sixty inch reach. But yeah, they be boosting stats. By the way, baby arms, big old head, no shoulders, no type of muscle definition. A vet of the game, like, but he's thirty seven. And all this stuff. Solid. I think overall grappling wise, Matt Wyman is a much better grappler as far as technically wise. But like I said, the fact that he's old and really hasn't been evolving is just going to lean me to Jordan Levitt all the way. 
or Jordan Levitt or yeah, all the way in this one. Striking and grappling. His wrestling to be able to put Wyman on his back and just do what he wants in this one. I like I said, Wyman's older, hasn't been involved. Yes, his technique is cleaner, but having all that clean technique going against a young stud fighter or somewhat a stud. I think it's like to say the style matchup does open the opportunities for Wyman, like because you got not going really against the best striker, going against guys really gonna kinda go to where you have opportunity, which is in the grappling. But like I said, I think the age and the fact that Wyman has not involved, you know, like he has this supposedly on paper the taller fighter, I feel like he's gonna look much smaller and leave it is just gonna be able to impose his will on him, take him down, do he wants in the striking and control where this fight is going at all points and beat Wyman to the decision. I don't think he really stops. I don't see no amazing power from Levitt. I don't see no amazing grappling from Levitt. He got a good frame, he got some good skill set, but like he still like a, he still looks very green to me. It's just the fact that Wyman's old, hasn't evolved, and Levitt's bigger, stronger, and had he's good. Like you know, his skills aren't where they should be. I mean, are could be a lot better. Like he has a lot of room to improve. I think he's just enough just right now to have like some good work against Wyman and be like I said, be the dictates and control the pace of this fight in just about all areas in this fight. I don't think he just shuts him out in this fight, but as far as on a scorecard, he shuts him out. I think it's a, a semi-competitive fight, but on a scorecard, probably 30-27. So in this one, I got Jordan Levitt via decision. Now to our main event, or not main event, our prelim headliner, not the main event. This definitely would be no main event on any card, even if like you try, really try to scrub the bottom of a of the UFC for um some other some fights. This fight could not even main event, even like some among the worst fighters in the UFC. This fight could not main event. So on to our prelim headliner, we have in the heavyweight division, John Vellante versus Jake Collier. But no disrespect to Vellante, but you know where you stand right now with the UFC and in your career is like. Lots of downs, some ups, but lots of downs. And Collier, like Collier, has been in UFC for a good minute. But what, like, do people even really know who Collier is? He's been so inactive and really had no feats in the UFC to even be remembered. Like, you kind of forgot who he is. Oh, like, oh, it's Collier. That man hasn't fought in like five years, and he came back, got knocked out. So, um, yeah, who is Collier? So, Vellante versus Collier. How I see this one is um, John Vellante versus Collier. What do I see in this one? I, both 6'3", both, like, you got a bloated up light heavyweight and Volante blew up to heavyweight. And you got a blown up middleweight Collier blew up to, from middleweight to heavyweight. So two guys that should not be here. Two guys who got, you know, got a um, pregame Thanksgiving, like, five or six, seven months in advance and just kept the weight on and never took it off. So that's what you got going on right here. How I see this one, I think Collier the more versed striker as far as his arsenal. Volante a little bit more simple with his striking. Kind of this power heavy as far as with his striking. Better wrestling, but hasn't had the most success with his wrestling. But I think it more so comes down to experience as one. And also Volante being bigger in a sense, fighting at light heavyweight. Whereas Collier was more so a middleweight for most of his career. So experience and power. I think Collier is more averse, but not as dangerous. And he's really going to come down to the power of Volante in this one being the differential in this one. And the being the power strikes, and I think I don't think Collier's defense is the best, so I feel like this is gonna be a kind of a sloppy fight between guy two overweight dudes, two fat dudes, and Volante's power is gonna be the differential on this one. And the lack of defense on Collier's side is gonna end up in a first round TKO loss for Collier. So in this one, I got John Volante via first round TKO. And that concludes my fight predictions for the prelims of UFC Fight Night. Hermanson versus Vittori. And as always, thanks for watching.